Hey everyone, welcome to my detailed Duke GM time guide. I will be showing three different strats, one with Scythe, one with Slow Reaper Axe, and one with the Arclight. I will also be going over the prep and what options you have there. Anyways, let's get into it. First off, let's start with the gear and inventory. The main difference between the three setups is just swapping the main weapon. I downgraded the armor for realism, as most people in full Torva aren't using an Arclight. Bellator's BIS for all three, but Ultor or Berserker can work fine. Note then, all three setups, your options for special attack weapons will be as follows. You want a BGS with Dragon Claws or Voidwaker with Claws being slightly better if you have Bellator. Otherwise, Voidwaker is slightly better, but either is fine. If you're missing BGS, you can do Dragon Warhammer. However, it's only got about a 1 in 4 chance to hit, so you're better off just doing Double Claw or Double Voidwaker. But Double Voidwaker is much better on full defense. If you're missing both Claws and Voidwaker, then you can just double BGS. The Light Bear is for gaining special attack back between kills. Note that at the time of making this guide, you need to do one setup kill because the timer starts as soon as the mushroom spawns, and the mushroom spawns as soon as you enter the room, so the first kill always loses 10 seconds. If they ever update the game to change this, then you can just do one attempt and tally out. The Ring of Suffering can be flicked for extra damage, I recommend getting consistent with the method before worrying about this. The Knife and Tick Log is required for the prep, free gub stress are for zero tick loss healing. The runes are for Venge and Spellbook Swap. Now that gear is settled, let's go on to the method. First off, for prep. The prep takes 43.2 seconds with a 7 mushroom method, 46.2 seconds with the potion making with tick manipulation, and 56.4 seconds with potion making without tick manipulation. The 56.4 second prep is clearly too slow, but both a 7 mushroom method and tick manipulation potion prep will work fine. Some people don't like it, however I really recommend the 7 mushroom method as you can miss up to 5 ticks and it's still as good or better than perfect potion making method and you only have to pass through the extremity traps once whereas with potion making you have to pass through 3 times increasing the odds the shadows stall you. Whichever method you choose, here's the process. First you start by standing here and then use a knife on a tick log and then click to move all on the same tick. Then click on the mushroom to pick a mushroom. Note you can also just click directly on the mushroom or you click to move after the knife log. Note, I use shift right click with object marker plugin so I can see when the mushroom spawns. Also, you can actually move a tick before the mushroom spawns to save a tick. I do this by looking at what tick the death message for a boss is, and then 18 ticks later I click to start the process. Or to simplify the math, think of it as minus 2 ticks. So if your boss died on tick 1024, the last digit of a tick counter will be 2 when you click. After gaining the first double mushroom, what you do next depends on which method you choose. If you're making potions, simply run to the next mushroom and do the knife plus log just like before. With my true towel on, you can see I do it right as I reach the towel before the mushroom. And then the same thing for salt. Then make the potions and use it on the boss, careful to not lose ticks. This method requires at least 4 empty inventory spots. If you want to do the 7 mushroom method, which I recommend, then you actually have two ways of doing it after you get the initial double mushroom. The first is as soon as the double mushroom appears in your inventory, you use a pestle and mortar on the mushroom in your inventory and then click on the mushroom patch with the same tick or the tick after and repeat. Once you have 30 dust plus 2 mushrooms in your inventory, you can run straight to the boss and finish crushing the last 2 mushrooms. This method requires at least 3 empty inventory spots. The other option is after you get the initial double mushroom, you can step back and repeat the process of knife log move click mushroom, gain 2 mushrooms at a time until you have 6 mushrooms. Then, for the very last mushroom, as soon as the 6 mushroom is in your inventory, you use a pestle mortar on a mushroom and then click the mushroom patch, just like the previous method showed. Once you get the last 7th mushroom, run for a boss. This method requires at least 7 empty inventory spots. Do whichever method you prefer. Note for a step back method, I keep the pestle and mortar in a spot 1 below where my 7th mushroom will end up to make it easier to grind the mushrooms while I run for the traps. I basically look at the traps while clicking on the mushroom plus pestle, to avoid the shadows. For a pestle war method, I keep it close to where mushrooms appear in my inventory. Whichever of the 7 mushroom methods you do, once you get to the boss, you simply use the mushroom powder on the boss until you run out. Once you see you have 3 mushroom powder left, finish clicking to use powder on boss, and then you can start eating, drinking, doing anything you need to before be just backing, as shown here. That's prep done, so now on to the setup kill. First of all, I tend to drop a bunch of anglers in a convenient spot when I first enter the room so that I can pick them up as needed during the setup kill. Also note that the vents go in a cycle, moving one over to the right each time. So on the setup kill's prep, have the last vent be at the far right before you wake the boss up. 
This way, after a perfect 7 mushroom prep, you will take only one tick event damage and not have to waste ticks to move away from event. I tried to end the boss fight with full HP and at least one angler in my inventory so I can be full HP before the next speedrun attempt on the next kill. As you're running after the setup kill, you want to venge and spellbook swap to Arceus. Note, sometimes your character will stop moving while spellbook swapping. You still have more than enough time to make it if you're quick, but you can optionally take one of each room out of your pouch and drop them on the tile before the mushroom. By doing a red X click to move, your character will always keep moving during spellbook swap. Just make sure you enable the setting for runes to go straight into your pouch, if you do this. As you're finishing up using either the potions or dust on the boss to wake it up, make a note of what actions you need to perform, like equip BGS, drink potion, eat angler, summon frawl, etc. Ideally do actions like equipping BGS before reaching the boss. You can also perform actions in between using mushrooms on the boss if you time it well. Now for the actual fight, start by BGSing the boss then stepping away and equipping your main weapon. If you miss, you can complete the kill normally with Lightbear equipped to get another attempt quicker. Assuming you hit, let's go over the Venge procedure. After stepping back, the boss will either mage or melee you. It's RNG. If it doesn't melee, then step in at the last second to pop a Venge without losing it to chip damage. If using Scythe or Arclight, I recommend stepping back after you get your next hit off and taking the second Venge. With Soul Reaper, I recommend waiting until you're forced to tank another hit before Venging, simply casting Venge at the last second so the chip damage doesn't take it. Now that we've covered the start and venge procedure, let's go over the Scythe, Soul Reaper, and Arclight methods. Let's start with the Scythe. For this method, we do BGS, 5 Scythe, 1 Claw, 6 Scythe. Notice here I don't miss any ticks, but I fully avoid the first melee, so we can just step back and try to venge again. Venging a mage hit is nicer since it's easier to flick the recoil, but it's fine to venge the melee too, just don't waste it on the chip damage. With Scythe, I really should have gone for double venge at the start, but it's not a big deal as I'll be forced to tank a hit later on anyways. After 5 Scythe hits, we do our claw spec. This is important as it allows us to avoid tanking any hits, at least until enraged events happen. After the eye special, Duke will do 3 hits, then double vents, then 2 more hits, then eye special. We need to kill him around the start of a second eye special. Note the clip missed GM by 1 tick, as 125 20 counts. If we had overkill on the last site, it would have been one tick faster, so this is literally the last possible hit. Now for the Soul Reaper method. This is the same as Scythe, except we Soul Reaper spec for Claw spec, and we Soul Reaper spec on the sixth hit that's after Claws. If you lose count, Duke will do Vents, followed by two melee attacks. We want to Soul Reaper spec around the second melee attack, maybe a bit after if Duke enraged very early. You can also just use the Soul Reaper charges to track it. The first spec is on 4 charges, the second spec is on 5 charges. Note that we double venged at the start and ended up nearly dying after the forced tank later on, so do not double venge at the start if you're using the Soul Reaper Axe. Now for the Arclight method. Here you do the normal start. Note, however, that the second attack Duke does is a forced tank, so you may as well take your first two venges at the start. You want to do 14 Arclight hits and 1 claw spec. You can claw spec whenever. Just don't do it as the very last hit, as with delayed hit splats delay the death animation. You won't need to tank another hit until after I special. Note that flicking the recoil ring between hits is tougher with a 4 tick weapon than a 5 tick weapon, so don't worry too much about it. Also, at the start, since you have to tank 2 hits anyways, you could step back to trigger a second mage hit if you want. That's all 3 methods covered, now some final tips. Note that Siphon Soul Reaper method can lose up to 4 ticks on tick perfect prep before losing any hits, and Arclight can lose up to 2 ticks before losing any hits, excluding overkill time save. Keep that in mind if you lose any ticks during prep or a fight. Note, I like putting my recoil ring close to my Guthix rest so I can flick rings easier while drinking. However, focus on getting the basic method down without tick loss before worrying about recoil. Note that if you're missing BGS and decide to go for double claw or double woodwicker start, you may get some awkward cycles, so only take the second venge once forced to tank. For the eye special, in case you mess up and are on a weird timing, basically once the eye starts to twitch is when you need to click to move to safety. Another cue is after the poop sound from the eye opening fully finished playing, you need to click to go back. I recommend doing some casual runs of high HP and really testing being tick perfect on eye special dodging. Note, you can bring full to rock for the last hit if you want to get fancy, and even locate an orb before using it. Your inventory space will be quite rough though, so I wouldn't really do this unless you're feeling very advanced. That's about all for this guide. Hope this helps you get GM time. Good luck on the Zuckhelm grind.